What is up guys, Austin Nerd Show here back again and we just got done seeing Ant-Man and Wasp, the brand new movie from the Marvel MCU. And so just going to do a review here, um, probably I do spoiler free at the beginning then spoilers later on, I don't know exactly how I'll blend it all together. This will probably be short because for me personally I don't have a whole lot to say about the movie so I don't know what all I'm going to go in the details on and everything but we'll say so let's just start of course is the movie good or not it's a Marvel movie of course it's going to be good it's not a bad movie by any stretch and of course Marvel just continues to knock them out of the park with good movie after good movie but I will say for my opinion at least it was kind of boring like I thought the movie was a little bit boring um, there were parts I thought could have been more action-packed there wasn't a whole lot of action it was more story in my mind like thinking about stuff it seemed to be more story than it was action compared to like the first one and stuff um, you like I feel like you didn't get a whole lot of like Ant-Man action which that could be I guess a spoiler but I feel you did, didn't see Ant-Man a whole lot you saw like a lot of them as their normal selves and uh, like normal size and stuff but you didn't get to see a whole lot of Ant-Man and Wasp and so I was kind of disappointed with that um, but uh, but like I said the story is still good and I like what they're doing of course if you saw the first Ant-Man movie one of the big things was that they lost the mom so um, we're I forget the guy's name, um, but whoever the old Hank Pym guy is, they lost his wife, and so the girl from the movie Wasps, it's her mom, they lost her in the um, quantum zone where Ant-Man shrinks down and he shrank down so small he went into the quantum zone, but he was able to make it back where she did the same thing and wasn't able to make it back. So it was a whole, like, you know, we got to find mom, and that's pretty much what the story was, was trying to find a way to get into um, the quantum realm and find her and bring her back if possible if she's even still alive but just find something down in there and so that's pretty much what a lot of the whole movie was um so let's see that's pretty much it i really want to go into for spoilers and stuff characters a lot of the actors of course are a lot of the exact same people um good people i like the new people they added i don't know who it was but the girl that played the villain ghost um lawrence fishburne as uh Ben Foster, I think was his name, Goliath. And then, uh, of course, we have um, Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, which is funny as usual. Um, Evangeline Lilly, I believe, is her name, that plays Wasps. And, of course, I like her from when she was in the Hobbit movies and stuff, and now she's in um, these movies as Wasp and everything. And then, of course, the guy, I think his name's Robert Duvall. I can't think, I don't know if that's his name or not, but I think that's who it is, the old guy that plays Hank Pym. I really like him a lot, of course, and he's an old actor and stuff. And so he's, you know, got history behind him and stuff. Then they brought in a new character of the mom, which I had no clue who it was. I obviously, you know, by the looks and stuff, oh, she's got to be someone famous. But I had no clue who it was going to, like, who the actress was that portrayed her, like, in the younger scenes and stuff before she ended up doing this Quantum Zone thing. Uh, but then I saw at the very end who it was, and I'm like, oh, I guess I didn't recognize her at all which was Michelle Pfeiffer and stuff. And so I liked all those new characters. Then they had, of course, the villains of um, Walton Goggins, which was just kind of like a little cheesy side villain thing that didn't do a whole lot. Like, he was in it, um, but I liked, you know, his evil villainous stuff he did. Then we had the FBI director, which I forget his name, but he's all fresh off the boat and stuff. He's the dad, and I like that show and stuff. And so he's a fun character to add. Then, of course, the little girl, which is, is so fun and cute and everything. She's um, Scott's daughter, which is Paul Rudd's character's daughter. Um, she's just fun and cute and everything. And, of course, all the ants. You have ants, um, you know, big ants, little ants. It's all sorts of different um, kinds of ants, and they're just all funny. And it's um, got a lot of comedy in it. It wasn't, didn't seem to me as funny as maybe the first one, but it still had a lot of comedic parts and stuff, but of course had a little bit more serious stuff. Oh, and I forgot on actors, of course, the whole um, Scott's like background team with Michael Pena and then I, uh, T.I. and I forget the other guy's name. There's whole security team and stuff. Um, there, of course, a lot of funny people and stuff. And so a lot of good actors in this movie that I was surprised, you know, it became almost like an ensemble cast with like adding just more and more characters and everything. So all that was good. Like I said, the movie, to me, could have been have a lot more action, could have had a lot more Ant-Man related stuff of, you know, changing sizes and everything. But I guess, you know, it's they did what they could and fit in with the story and everything. So just for like a rating, I'd probably say a 7 out of 10 maybe for me. I know my brother absolutely loved it because he loved all the characters that they added in and everything. So he said he absolutely loved it and it's one of his top Marvel movies. Um, but for me, it's, you know, one of those, it's not bad by any means. Um, but it's not 
like Avengers Infinity War or anything. Like, that's, you know, completely two different scales on that thing. This is a movie where I'll probably watch again one more time, like when they release it, like on DVD or whatever. But I'll probably never watch it again unless it's on TV and I just check it out or something. So that's, you know, it's not that high on my list, but it wasn't bad. Nothing can really be spoiled except for the very end of the post credits. So there are two, as usual. Uh, you know, right after the main credits where they rolled all the characters' names, and then they at the very, very end of the movie, there's another little scene, which isn't really worth waiting around for, so if you don't want to wait that long, don't. But it, there is a scene there. Um, so, yeah, just the mid credit scene is the only thing that's really, like, spoilerish or anything that could relate to this movie. Um, so, as I said, I'd probably get it about a 7 out of a 10 in my rating and stuff, and that's probably all I can probably go into without spoilers and stuff, which aren't, like I said, nothing you really be spoiled. But now we're going to get into spoilers. So for spoilers, um, so I like the whole ghost character which became the villain, which I thought the whole time like going into this movie, I feel she wasn't going to be the villain, like end up being a villain in the end, which she didn't. She kind of, you know, became not a hero or anything, but she just became existence. You know, something happened to her and it showed her that her dad worked with Hank Pym years ago in S.H.I.E.L.D. and they he stole some stuff or whatever, like according to the story, stole some stuff and did a thing and it reacted and it affected her and killed her parents and you know now she's all like glitchy and twitchy and she can go in between um I forget what they call it but like she can like phase through stuff she phases a lot and it's an issue and it's killing her and so they're trying to get her or she's trying to get it fixed and help repair herself and everything and so she's trying to steal this machine that Hank Pym is created to try and go into the quantum realm to receive his or to get his wife and bring her back and so she's trying to get that, trying to steal all that stuff. And they're, of course, trying to stop her from doing it and try and go in to get the um, mom back and everything. Then they bring uh, Ant-Man back in. Of course, he's in trouble from the whole stuff that happened in Civil War. So he's on house arrest stuff. So it's whole him, you know, trying to help them out. Um, but then also trying to get back to his house before the FBI, you know, gets him that check or catches him not being at his house on house arrest and everything. And then, of course, you get his daughter and stuff in there. Um... But so it's all like them now to try and help him out because this ghost has appeared and she's um, causing issues with stuff. And so they get him back in to help out and everything. Um, trying to get, you know, two to be able to beat the one or whatever because she can, you know, face. So they try and punch her and she just, you know, it goes right through and everything. Um, so then they go to um, trying to, you know, get stuff going on again. I can't remember the whole story. But then they bring in Lawrence Fishburne's character, which is known as Goliath um, is like his alter ego type name which is a character and if you saw our um, toy review we did today of Ant-Man figures Marvel Legend figures he's one of them he's wearing the all blue and yellow suit um, so that is like kind of like his character um, and so they have him which again also worked with Hank Pym back in the day and then they had an issue falling out and so now they're kind of like enemy stuff but they're um, he's trying to help this girl, he like found uh, the ghost girl and is trying to help her and he's you know trying to get Hank Pym to try and help fix her and stuff and get her uh, fix the issues going on with her trying to get her whole again instead of the phasing stuff. And then we bring in Walton Goggins character who's just trying to steal this whole stuff because apparently um, Wasp, I can't remember the girl's name, um, like her character name, but Wasp has, you know, been buying, she said, like parts from this guy to help build this whole reactor thing to go into the quantum realm. And so when they're trying to get the last piece, he's, you know, trying to like, he's like, we know what you're doing and we want your machine and we want a part of it and all those sorts of stuff. And she refuses and so he's trying to, you know, take it from him and so they're trying to steal the whole the stuff the whole time and you know ghost is as well and so this whole like connection of three people of course the ant-man group um walter goggins group and the uh, ghost trying to all get this reactor thing all at once same time they're shrinking the building up and down so they can you know move it wherever they need to they're putting making it big going into it and people are coming like the cops stuff so that shrink down and take off again and so it's whole like this big and shrinking of a building and the building's like the biggest character of the whole thing trying to get this thing to go into the um this whole uh reactor thing to work in the end, Hank Pym is the one that chooses to go into the realm. So they have this, of course, little like submarine looking thing. And he, they turn the machine on. He goes into the realm and is able to find his wife there. And he ends up bringing her back. 
And so again, like I mentioned, it's Michelle Pfeiffer, so they bring her back. And like I said, I'm skipping a whole bunch of stuff, but there's not a whole lot of details really to go into in this. Um, but they end up bringing her back into the realm, and of course this place has changed her, made her different, gave her more powers and stuff. Not exactly sure what, but they've it says it changed her, and it shows that she has power and stuff, because she ends up... He starts going crazy in the world and she, you know, finds him and touches him and it brings him back. And so they bring her back into the world and of course they're having a fight between Ant Man Wasp and then the ghost in this building because Ghost is trying to pull the energy stuff from um, the original Wasp into her to help her make her full again and stuff. And so they end up, you know, coming back and everything. And she, uh, the old wa amp or old wasp, ends up seeing, you know, ghosts of suffering, all this sort of stuff. So she ends up going up and touching her, and is with her new powers, or whatever, is able to fix her. So she is now become whole again, and she's no longer got the phasing issues and stuff. And so then, of course, that's like the end of the big thing. And so now everyone's running, you know, trying to get away from the cops and everything. And so Ghost and Lawrence Fishburne's character end up, you know, leaving together because, you know, he found her when she was a girl and has kind of, like, raised her up and trying to help her. And so now that she's fixing everything, he's like, you know, we don't... He's like, I want to, you know, still stay with you or whatever. You know, like, still be like a father to her and everything. Um, and then we've got Ammon and Wasp, who are now, you know, working as a team back together again and, like, back in a relationship and everything. And so that's all good and stuff there. Um, old Ant-Man and old Wasp are back together again. You know, all the whole family's all back together. Then, um... Paul Rudd's, or Ant-Man, Scott Lang, is now off of house arrest, so he's now free, so he can go see his daughter whenever he wants, you know, and it shows him, like, at it looks like a drive-in theater, but it turns out they're all in a bunch of little tiny Hot Wheels cars that they shrank down, and they're watching a movie on a laptop and stuff, and I thought that was fun at the very end. So that's really also, of course, in between, like, the whole parts of shrinking the building and everything and running and everything, they do, you know, going in from fighting a bunch of guys, you know, being Ant-Man and Wasp, so shrinking down as Wasp, and then Ant-Man, you know, growing big, shrinking down, doing whatever he needs to do at the moments and stuff, and it shows, like, the parts where he became super giant. I think they said about 85 feet tall or something when he does the thing by the boat that it shows the commercial where he's in the water and stuff because of his um, whole suit thing reactor going all crazy and stuff, and so it just makes him really big. So we did have a lot of stuff, you know, there, but like I said, to me it wasn't enough to make it a really good movie, so I got kind of bored with it a lot. And so then that leads us to the very end, and of course everything's all happy and hunky door and all that sort of stuff. And so then it goes to our mid credit scenes where we have um, Ant-Man, or Hank Pym, Wasp, and Ant-Man, I guess the old Wasp is there too, all three of them. And so Scott Lang is going into, like, the nether realm to catch this innards like healing energy to help ghost out more or something so it has a little canister and stuff and he goes in captures the canister is, is ready to come back out or for them to help pull him back out and then no one's responded to him and it goes back to them and they have disappeared of course like all the event people did in the avengers so um hank pym i again i don't remember the wife's name but the older wasp and then the new wasp all disappear and they've all become the dust particles and stuff and so that kind of, that's where our movie's in and that's like the biggest spoiler but of course if you've seen avengers you expect something like that to happen there at the end of the movie and so i really like that part ending that off you know showing in so scott's trapped in the nether realm you know he can't be pulled back out because he's got no way to come in and out without their control of things but since they're gone he's you know just trapped in there so it's like what's going to happen and then of course we have the very end credit scene where it's um just got the ant sitting there playing the little drum game thing and then it goes to black train and says ant-man and wasp will return and then it switches to a question mark like maybe um, so that's very interesting to see how they're going to continue on with that and see what's going to happen. Of course, can't wait for the next Avengers movie to see how, if they end you up know, bringing Ant-Man back, if somehow someone help gets, gets him out of there. It'll be interesting to see, and I want to know what's going to happen next. And that's all they keep doing. They keep building all this stuff, and it just makes me want to see more. So that's all I've got about the movie. I can't think of really anything else or big or important. Like I said, a bunch of little characters, but I can't go into all the details and remember it all right now. But like I said, the movie's not bad. It's just not like a block, but like, you know, a super major movie or anything. And so, like I said, I thought it could be a little bit better action-wise and, you know, Ant-Man and Wasp action and everything. But like I said, it's not bad. Probably about a 7 out of 10, like I said. So I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, let me know in the comments down below and let me know what your opinion of the movie was. If you thought anything different from me or if you enjoyed it more or less don't forget to let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to see more of our videos and we'll see you next time